Hello everyone. So I hope you guys are doing great. Today I am going to speak about my Google interview experience. Approximately one year back, I had applied for Google. Google had an opening for 2020 undergraduate software developer position. Uh, at that time, I recently completed my internship with Amazon, and uh, it was a grey area. I had I hadn't received my job offer from Amazon, so out of curiosity, I applied for Google. At the end, it's every developer's dream job, so I said, why not? And uh, I applied out of the blue. And trust me, I didn't receive any kind of reply from the recruiter for nearly one month. Uh, in that period, I received my Amazon result. I was given a PPO, so that may be the reason why I didn't study hard for Google, and uh, I couldn't get into Google. But it's okay, no regrets. Fortunately, what happened was uh, I fa- I found someone on LinkedIn who was giving out referrals for Google, and for the same position that I had apl- that I had applied for, I approached the person, and uh, he liked my profile. He reviewed my resume and he liked my profile. He said, "Okay, I can give you a, a referral." And uh, I got the referral. That referral really boosted my prof- uh, application process. Like within two days, I received a mail from a recruiter telling me that uh, your interviews are going to be scheduled. So please tell whichever dates you are comfortable with. And uh, she also gave me some resources, some tips. So from where you should study, from what should you do, what should you not do, all those kind of thing. So a referral really helps in a when you apply for a product based company, especially when you are applying an off campus recruitment drive. So, uh, yeah. So I chose a date around December for my interviews. That was uh, pretty early. I feel because I had just come like I um, I completed my end semester exams around December start and in the mid December I had my Google interview so it was very less time to prepare for Google interview I was sh- like strictly tell you that take proper time for your preparation it's not like a first come first serve this kind of thing so be patient pr- prepare properly and then you only go for the interviews. So this is the first thing that you need to remember. Be patient. Don't rush your interviews. Be it any product-based company. Coming to the tips that were given to me from many people, like first, like the person who gave me referral gave me the following tips: was he get a good command over DSA. So that's pretty trivial. Like you should have a good command over DSA. You should practice a lot. Uh, the resources mentioned were Geeks for Geeks, Code Forces, and. Uh, he suggested that practice a lot from me, uh, lead code. So solve around 100 to 150 questions from lead code of medium and hard difficulty level. Then practice from checking the coding interview book, CTCI. So I really suggest you that the book is really awesome. Every developer should go through that book. It has some really good uh, questions and concepts that you should you should know before going for a coding interview. And uh, you should have a practice of writing code on pen and paper or without any ID. The reason behind this is when you give an online coding interview, you, in Google, what happens is you are shared a Google Doc. The interview is uh, the, uh, the second viewer and you are the first viewer. So the interviewer posts the question on that Google Doc and you have to write the solution in that Google Doc only. So you won't have any kind of ID, you won't have any kind of auto completion, you won't have any kind of auto indentation, you won't have any kind of suggestion of code. So that's why you should have a practice of writing code on a pen and paper or on a notepad or on a Google Doc where you don't have any kind of help that help the kind of help that you get in an ID. This is a very important thing, you can't miss it. So I really suggest you practice this before you go for any kind of online interviews. Seeing the current scenario, like for the next two, three years, what you can expect is like online interviews only. So this is a very important tip that you should always uh, do is practice a lot of writing code without an ID. The, and uh, the general tips that were given to me by the Google recruiter was to explain your code properly. So 
you should be very vocal about your code you should be you should be able to convey your ideas properly to the interviewer that what you want to say what you are conveying what you what's your approach to or solving the problem the second thing was clarity you should be clear in your code and your and in your ideas um, like it sh- you should not create a chaos or a right of fuzzy code that the interviewer can't understand you should be very clear simple and clear and improve so if the interviewer asks you should be able to improve your code be it space be it time complexity you should be able to optimize your code if the interviewer demands and yes it's google it's a, one of the best tech companies in the world and they surely want the best of the best that's why you like they expect the best code so you need to improve your code as and when if the interviewer asks you and practice yes you have to do a lots of practice and especially a practice of writing the code on pen and paper or on a notepad not on an ide because uh, even if you have an on site round at that time you are supposed to write the code on a chromebook so and that that is also google doc so you won't be having any kind of id that's why writing a code without an id without the help of an id is very much important that this my interview happened pre covid so um, uh, what uh, was my interview scenario was like there were two online rounds and four offline four to five off campus rounds so seeing the current scenario i don't think the off campus rounds will be opening up anytime soon you can expect all the rounds to happen online only that's why practicing of writing code without an id is very much important and the important topic so the google recruiter himself gave me these important topics so i'll just list those topics sorting algorithms then hash tables searching algorithms object oriented programming c++ and java algorithm analysis graph and tree algorithms graph and tree algorithms are very much important if you are applying for any kind of product based company like not only in google but also in amazon i observed like graphs and trees are very much important so graph and tree are the must do concepts of like for everyone who think they are planning to go for any kind of coding interview in future then coming to the core data structures the uh, arrays linked list stacks queues hash table hash maps hash sets uh, binary trees trees heaps and graphs coming to mathematics uh, discrete mathematics concepts nth and k type of problem and uh, recursion so you need to have a good command of recursion also and uh, operating system system design and development practices so these three topics are the topics which are least likely to be asked uh, for a undergraduate who is just coming out of a college but they might be asked so having a knowledge about them will not hurt you these questions are asked mostly in the end stages of your interviews like uh, maybe the fifth or sixth interview but they might be asked so just study them so so how did i prepare for the interview uh, i had approximately around 1 and 1 1 and 1/2 month for my preparation so what i started was ki i started with geeks for geeks i solved around 40 to 50 questions with geeks for geeks and then i shifted towards lead code i solved around 40 to 50 questions of general uh, medium and hard difficulty level and some questions which had a google tag with them uh when i solved one lead code i realized one thing having a lead code premium can help you a lot a lot like the compile times is very fast you get access to uh, some new questions daily and uh, that's like really gives you an edge so i was really considering it but i didn't do it because i at that time i thought ki it's it's not worth it because uh, it was like only 15 days before my interview and i also had my semester exam so i didn't give it didn't uh, give it a try but i'll really suggest if you have the time and the resources of having a lead code premium just take it it really helps you when you are going for a uh, interview and uh, i found a hack for this lead code premium so it's not a complete hack but it's a good hack uh, there's a website called leadfree.com uh, it has a collection of 
ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द प्रीमियम क्वेश्चन विच आर ऑन लीड कोड डॉट कॉम टेल टू थाउजेंड एटीन और नाइनटीन यू वॉन्ट गेट एन ऑनलाइन आई डी फॉर सॉल्विंग दोज क्वेश्चन बट यू कैन गेट द क्वेश्चन लाइक वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन यू कैन फाइंड द एंसर्स एनी वे सो नोइंग द विच काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन विल बी कमिंग एन इंटरव्यूज कैन हेल्प यू लॉट सो लीड थ्री डॉट कॉम इज अ रियली गुड वेबसाइट दैट कैन हेल्प यू लॉट आई एल मैंशन द वेबसाइट इन माई डिस्क्रिप्शन यू कैन चेक इट आउट दैर एंड आई प्रैक्टिस्ड अ लॉट फ्रॉम द सी टी सी आई क्रैकिंग क्रैकिंग द कोडिंग इंटरव्यू बुक ऑल्सो so i really suggest you to use that book it's a really a good book when you are going for a coding or tech based interviews but i felt short like uh, i was not up to the mark or like for my amazon interview i studied for 20 days straight 10 to 10 uh, 12 hours but for google i didn't even give my 10% of all the efforts that i gave for amazon so Yeah, I was a short of efforts when it came for Google interview, but it's okay. I have no regrets about it. Now I'll tell you about the deed, the actual telephonic interview. So how was the interview and all that? Uh, the interview was scheduled at ten forty-five p.m. IST, that is in the night, and uh, it was taken by a engineer based in New York, USA. The interviewer was an engineer in the Google AdSense team, and. Uh, we had a brief introductory session and she immediately gave me the question that i was to or that i was supposed to be uh, supposed to solve it was a matrix cum graph based kind of question if you want to know the details about the question and all you can check out my blog on google interview experience in the description it has a total clear description about what was the question how i solved it and what not but i'll just tell you a brief idea about the question what was it and what i did so uh, the question was on graph and when whenever the graph question comes you must know that you have two you have two options bfs and dfs i chose bfs at that time i felt bfs was a better option and uh, the interview asked me directly ki why do you think bfs is better than dfs here at that time i was not able to answer this question and maybe this was the point where i lost the interview Uh, and uh, i was not able to give the answer she said it's okay you can go ahead with bfs and write the code i gave my approach i wrote the code i there were times when i rectified my code and uh, the thing was ki i used to rectify my code on my own i like just used to tell her uh, into okay, okay i have made this mistake here i guess i need to add this table and guess i need to add this matrix to rectify this issue and she was really happy with this because i was rectifying my own mistake but i felt if i had not done those mistake on the first place it would have been a good thing so just try to avoid silly mistakes and uh, after around 40 minutes i was done with the code i tested with few small test cases and the code was working fine after at the end of the interview the interview was also satisfied and uh, she said ki we can wrap up with the interview but before wrapping i asked her a question why do you think bfs or dfs uh, was a conflicting situation why do you think dfs would be would have been a better option she she explained to me that if dfs would have been chosen you could have landed to the solution much quicker compared to bfs so because dfs approaches the solutions in the depth whereas bfs approaches the solution in the breadth at that time i realized i made a very silly and a big mistake and this might cost uh, this costed me my interviews uh, so it's okay i don't have any regrets about it but it's completely fine but this is the thing about google like they want the best of the best and they judge you on very very small small things and that's completely fine because your uh, like the google is such a big company they are doing such a large scale operations and if they judge me on those small things at some in some scenario these situations can be a life and death scenarios also so i am completely fine with the decision they made the rejection was not given to me immediately around after 3 4 days i received a mail from the uh, google recruiter about scheduling scheduling a call she called me and uh, we had a discussion about my interviews so uh, 
like they gave me some feedbacks about my interview like i was very good with communicating my ideas my concepts to the uh, interviewer uh, i was able to rectify my own mistakes i was able to cover and find the edge cases but i needed some practice over my dsa concepts so it was expected because i made a blunder over bfs and dfs and uh, they said we can't take your application forward so it's completely fine i don't have any regrets but yeah it was a great experience like interviewing with one of the biggest tech companies in the world it's trust me you will learn a lot of new things uh, by doing so and things that i like to give you uh, is be vocal with your interviewer like tell your interviewer what you are doing what you what you think what you what do you want to do because they uh, you, uh, like virtual interviews are very different like what you can do is you know uh, normal interviews like you can take a book and just scribble your idea and show it to the interviewer but when it comes to virtual interview you can't do that it's very difficult so practice regularly on google docs how to work around um, how to write code on google docs and all the, all those kind of thing and be vocal with your ideas because the interview is sitting miles away from you it's a video link and the video is buffering and all those kind of things so be vocal with your ideas and that will help you a lot so that's all about my google interview experience and um, I have written a blog on my uh, experience. It's named "I Got Rejected by Google," so you can check that blog. Uh, I've mentioned the links in the description. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you think uh, I have said something wrong, uh, I should have done something in a different way. Please let me know in my comments. I would love to learn what was my mistake in this interview. That's all from from my side thanks have a nice day